Let's look at an example where we're actually going to check the second order conditions. So let's suppose that we have a monopolist uh, producing Q1 units of whatever good they have a monopoly on for customer one. Q2 units for customer two. Well, the inverse demand function, so we're going to suppose that the inverse demand function for the customers are, or the inverse demand functions for the customers. are 50 minus 5q1 and 100 minus 10q2 dollars per unit. That's great. And the manufacturing cost we assume is 90 plus 20 times Q1 plus Q2. So we have a fixed cost 90 and then to produce each unit it costs 20. So we have the following profit function which is going to be P Q1 Q2 is equal to I multiply Q1 units that I sell times the inverse demand function plus Q2 units that I sell times the inverse demand function for customer 2. And then I have to subtract off my costs, my manufacturing costs, which is going to be 90 plus 20 times Q1 plus Q2. It's a very simple model, simple function, nice quadratic function. Not a, not a quadratic form, a quadratic function. And the critical points satisfy. Well, of course, dp dq1 is equal to 50 minus 10q1. This can be worked out, minus 20. And if that's equal to 0, this will happen if and only if Q1 is equal to 3. Similarly, dp dq2 is equal to 100, not 1,000, 100, minus 20 Q2, minus 20, is equal to 0. And that'll happen if and only if Q2 is equal to 4. So we have the critical points, and we want to know, well, is that a global maximum or global minimum? So now we check the second order conditions. So the Hessian is going to be 2dp dq1 squared d squared p partial with respect to q1, partial with respect to q2, d squared p over partial with respect to q1, partial with respect to q2, d squared p partial with respect to q. And of course we can compute these, well if I take uh, the second derivative of this guy with respect to Q1, it's clear that I'm only going to get a negative 10 back. If I take D, the partial of this guy with respect to Q2, I'm going to get 0 because it's not dependent upon Q2. 
Same thing for here if he has a symmetry. Now if I take the derivative of this guy with respect to q2, I'm going to get negative 20. And since, and now we, uh, we check our definiteness of this matrix, well we've got that the first leading principal minor is negative 10, which is less than 0, and the second leading principal minor is the determinant of negative 10, 0, 0, negative 20, which is equal to 200, which is greater than 0. The theorem gives us that d squared f is and remember, this is the, the value d squared, this is d squared f for every single point. For every single point. I, I need to make, make absolutely clear that this is a function now of q1 and q2, and it's just a constant matrix. Right, so this is a function of q1 and q2, and at every single q1 and q2, it's negative 10, 0, 0, tw negative 20. So make sure that you understand what I'm talking about there. And if, if you don't understand that, then come talk to me later. Uh, gives that d squared f is, in particular, it's positive or uh, negative definite for all q1 and q2. So on everything on that space, it's negative definite, and therefore by theorem by the theorem that we saw uh, in the third video, we have that this function is going to be a concave. So P is concave. And hence, Q1 star, Q2 star is equal to 3, 4, is a global max. And we can plug these numbers in to figure out exactly what the value of my profit should be at that point.